In the next few minutes, what I will uh, do is show you how to use g-power to uh, determine the power of a chi-square test that's already been conducted, and then how to use g-power to determine the number of individuals you'd need in a uh, when conducting a chi-square test to uh, detect a certain effect size and maintain a power of 0 0.80 at an alpha level of 0 0.05. So for this example, Mrs. Johnson ran a chi-square analysis to answer her research question. She wanted to know if there was a significant decrease in students who were not proficient from 2004 to 2005 as compared to 2005-2006, and was there a significant increase from uh, in proficiency from 2004 to 2005 as compared to 2005 to 2006. And so when she ran that chi-square, she found there was a significant relationship. However, we don't know the power of that particular uh, test. Uh, I mean, we could run this example in SPSS, but SPSS does not give us the power. So if we open up G power, we can uh, determine what the power of this test might be. So we go to uh, chi-square tests. We want to go to chi-square goodness of fit contingency tables. And an important thing is that this is post hoc because this test has already been conducted. And so she reported an effect size of 0.224, an alpha of 0.0, and the sample size was 36 because we had 18 in the 2004-2005 school year and 18 in 05 and 06. So we'll put 36 in there. Now the degrees of freedom is 1 because our degrees of freedom are determined by uh, the number of rows minus 1. So there's two rows minus 1 and that's 1 and the number of columns minus 1. So there's two columns minus 1. So 1 times 1 is 1. And so if we calculate, we can see that our power was not very good, 0.269, which really is very uh, small compared to our uh, optimal power uh, or our minimal power that we want of 0 0.80. So how do we determine how many we would need in this case? Well, we want to go to a priori. Okay, so this time now we are planning. We want our power to be 0 0.80. And so we go calculate, and in this case, what we need is for our total sample is 157 or about <clears throat> 76 uh, individuals, 77 individuals per group. So this would allow us to detect an effect size of 0.224 and maintain a power of 0 0.80. Now the other question is, um, if we want to detect a smaller effect, let's say Mrs. Smith wants to detect an effect size of 0 0.10. So are there enough students between both classes for her to detect this type of an effect? So we put in 0 0.10. We keep uh, our error at our alpha level at 0 0.05, our uh, power at 0 0.80 and our degrees of freedom at 1. And then we um, calculate we want this to be a priori. So clearly, there's not enough. We would need 785 in the total sample. So we would need to divide 785 by 2. That would be the number in each group. So the smaller the effect size, the larger the sample size. But let's say 
that we wanted to pick up with one degree of freedom. Let's say we wanted to pick up a large effect, even a moderate effect. We could put in 0 0.30, keep our power at 0 0.80, or a type 1 error rate at 0 0.05, and then calculate. So we'd need 88 or 44 per group, which is a very reasonable number to expect. And so, you know, if I were planning a study and I were going to use chi-square, I think perhaps that I would at least want to detect a moderate effect.